Hello, and welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. Today we're going to be doing a review and taking a closer look at an analog controller for the Sega Genesis. This is the XE1AP by Dempa Microsoft, an analog digital intelligent controller system. So stick around. As always, I like to start with the box of the system. And we can see that although this was made in 1989, mostly for the Sega Mega Drive, it also supported several other computer and gaming platforms. We can see that it was made by Dempa Microsoft. Microsoft is still in business, actually. Here's a couple products you might know them from. So we have in it, in the box, is just a styrofoam holder that holds the controller in place. The box also comes with an alternate thumbstick. I'm going to put that back in its little plastic baggie. There is an instruction manual that shows us how to use the controller. And then we have some documents. These are probably warranty and registration information. Looking at the controller, it's really big, but man, is it comfortable. Let's take a look at the back first. First, there's a shift switch. This is so you can switch to the flight controls or regular controls. And there's these th three CH little pots that you can adjust with an adjuster tool in order to adjust the sensitivity of the two analog sticks. There's two left and two right triggers. There's four action buttons on the front of the controller. There are several switches, so it's a computer or a Mega Drive. Are you playing digital or are you playing analog? Is A on auto or normal? Is B on auto or normal? And the start and select button on the controller. The left thumbstick is a traditional analog controller, but the right one just goes up and down. This is really good for some racing games where you, want, you can pick the gas or the speed of an aircraft. Now this also rotates 270 degrees. So you can have it in four different configurations. And this is really just a beautiful looking controller. And I feel like this is something that would look good as a spaceship on Star Trek. The XE1AP is enormous, and I want to show it to you next to two other notoriously large controllers. First, the original Xbox controller. Second, the Sega Saturn analog controller. Now, this controller was released in 1989, and we can kind of see how its shape has influenced the Saturn controller as Microsoft has admitted, the Xbox controller was inspired by the Saturn controller, which inspired the Dreamcast controller, which inspired the Xbox controller. Obviously, the XEAP1 is much larger than the Xbox controller, and it's even bigger than the Saturn 3D pad. The XE1 supports 10 games for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, the Sega CD, and the 32X. Well, here's the two games I'm going to show you in action, both for 32X. They are Space Harrier and Afterburner. 
So let's play. Get ready. With the XE1, I swear I feel like the gameplay moves faster. It's definitely a lot easier to play. I just hold the auto shoot with the shoulder button and move the analog stick to aim. I know a lot of controllers do auto fire, but here it feels so much better because you can move so much faster because you have analog control. It just makes boss battles like this one just fly. Afterburner was a favorite of mine as a kid on Genesis and also in the arcade, so I was really happy to find out as a 32X owner that it was released for 32X, and now as an XE1 owner, I'm even more happy to find out that this game supports my controller. In Afterburner, the left stick controls the direction of your plane. You can hold down one of the shoulder buttons on either side in order to fire missiles and your Vulcan, or you can have your Vulcan on auto, and then you move the right analog stick in order to control your speed faster or slower. Overall, the XC1AP is a very comfortable controller to hold. For me, it makes games that support it just so much better and more fun to play. So Afterburner, is a lot more fun. It's a lot easier to do a, a spiral, like a 360 on your side. Space Harrier is just a lot easier for me when I have analog control. And those are the only two games I have that support it. But my review based on those two games is this is an excellent piece of hardware. My only complaint with it is that this cord isn't all that long. So you might want to get, or if you already have, an extension cord for a Genesis controller or for some other 9-pin system that had extension cords available for it. Other than the cord being short, this is amazing. It took me about a year to find one at a reasonable price watching eBay auctions. So I think I paid about $70 or $80 for this one to get it shipped here uh, from Japan. And... You know, I've seen buy it nows up as high as, you know, $200, $250. And sometimes those sell, but be patient. Wait for an auction to come up that starts at a reasonable price. Or see if you can find one from a collector. I just can't say enough how great of a controller this is. And any Sega collector deserves to own this.